So in this week's video of Next.js Zero to Hero series, we'll be talking about Next.js server-side rendering, complementing the last video on Next.js pre-rendering capabilities. So stay tuned. So the last time we were here, we introduced the concept of pre-rendering, the default method that Next.js uses to render its pages, resulting in better performance and less effort for the client by serving the client with a pre-built HTML file bundled with the necessary JavaScript file to make it work. We discussed that Next.js presented two main ways of pre-rendering, static site generation, which was the topic of the previous video, and server-side rendering, which we will be talking about today. Hello world, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Igor. I am a software engineer based in Portugal, and on this channel, we do coding-related stuff like tutorials, challenges, and more related topics. So if you're interested in those, please consider subscribing down below. Now, as always, this video is part of an XJS series called Zero to Hero that I'm hosting here on YouTube that will help you become an XJS pro in building blazing fast React applications. For this video, you can find the source code, as always, in the description down below. And there's also going to be a link to the playlist up here. So let's talk about server side rendering. Now, server-side rendering works on the same basis as static site generation, where the goal is to serve the client with a pre-built static HTML page that the server has pre-rendered and that is then hydrated by the bundled JavaScript file, therefore restoring the page to its true interactive glory. The main difference to be aware of between both of these pre-rendering methods is the point in time when the page's HTML is pre-rendered. Static site generated pages are pre-rendered at build time when we run the next build command. It is a case of generating the pages and forgetting about them until a new build is necessary to reflect new changes on the platform. On server-side generated pages, however, pages HTML is generated on each request to the server. This means that the same page is rendered multiple times along the application's lifetime, basically as many as it is requested unless we use caching, but we will be talking about later. With this out of the way, as you can see, server-side rendered pages will be less performant than statically generated pages and cannot be stored on a CDN for faster global access. So like we discussed on the previous video, static websites will always be the preferred choice and more performant. However, sometimes server-side rendering is the only option. The main reason you might be looking for server-side rendering over static site generation when building a page is if that page needs to pre-render frequently updated data that is fetched from some external source. And due to that reason, it can't be statically generated at build time as it needs to always be up to date. So how to use it in Next.js? So unless that we specify that a Next.js page is gonna be either server-side rendered or statically rendered with data, check previous video, Next.js won't be able to tell the difference. So we need to be able to tell Next.js these pages are of these types, so pre-render them accordingly. And to do this, Next.js allows us to define specific methods within our pages components that will then be evaluated at build time and assessed whether each page is to be pre-rendered at build time or on each request. So on last video, we discussed the static site generation methods and server-side rendering is no different. To use server-side rendering for an XJS page that you're building, we need to export an async function called get server side props from our pages react component. Now this is the function that Next.js server will be calling on each request. This function's job is to feed any data that we want that may come from external sources into our React component on each request for that page. And it does that similar to static site generation through that React component's props. So the function needs to be asynchronous. It needs to have a specific name, get server side props, and it needs to have a very specific return type, which is an object containing the props property and then the data that we want inside it. And with these couple of steps, our page became server-side rendered and will always be up to date every time it is requested. So let's take a look at this in practice by updating our doc app. For the purpose of the tutorial, we'll be creating a new page that's gonna be server-side rendered and it's gonna be displaying a dog carousel, let's call it that, whose data will be coming from the server each time the page is requested. So to kick this off, I'm gonna create a new Next.js project based on last video's project, which was on static site generation. And to do this, I'm gonna use this command, which is gonna use npx to call the create next app tool without installing it. I'm gonna name it Next.js server side rendering, two flags for using npm and for using TypeScript, and then the dash e flag 
is going to specify the template that we want to use to generate this project. And I'm using the last video's project, which was the static generation one. So if I now press enter, it's going to install dependencies, create our project, and this should only take a minute. Okay, so now we have our project created. Let's go inside it, open VS Code, fire up the development server. Okay, and this is exactly what we had on the last video. If we then just take a look at the current project that we have, we have this index page where we have our dogos, which came from an in-memory database that we created. So just a file exporting an array of docs, and there's the statically generated pages for each of the docs. So what we're going to do now is create the new page, the new carousel page that's going to be server-side rendered. And the first step to do that is going in pages. We're going to create that within the docs directory, within the docs route. And in it, we're just going to create a new file, call it carousel.tsx. So what we're going to do here is export a new React component that we're going to call carousel. And this one will be typed with a data prop that's going to be an array of docs, which is going to receive by the get server side props function that Next.js will call on every request. Now this dog interface was created also in the last video. It's within the definitions file. We're going to check that in a moment. And then we just added some body to the actual component so, so that we have anything to see. Basically just an H1 tag, naming the page, then just gonna have a link to go back to the main page. And in here is where we're gonna create the carousel once we have the data. This is the interface that we created to represent the dog. So it's just a basic object with an ID, a name and a description. Okay, so now that we have this page, we still haven't defined any special async function within Next.js, so this is basically just a statically generated page without any data. So if we go back to our application, doc slash carousel, this is just what we have, an h1 and a link. So let's make it server-side rendered. Let's add the magical function that will make this a server-side rendered page, the get server-side props function. Specific name, we typed it because we like using JavaScript and having everything typed. It is an async function. And then this function will fetch all dogs in our in-memory database. Just let's take a look. Just a file where we export a dogs array. And then it's going to return them as a randomly sorted list. And we're going to limit to two to see more how dynamic it is on each request. It is going to get all the dogs on that array of our in-memory database. It's going to sort it randomly and then slice the resulting array from zero to two to just get two of the items of that database. Then we have a specific return type, which is an object with a props attribute. And then we're going to pass the data that we just created up here. This data is going to have the same name we are passing up here to the component. So at this point, something is going to be passed to our React component. One step we're going to take is for the purpose of this video, we are going to update our database to have more than three dogs because the possible combinations of two between three dogs are pretty small and we would have a hard time seeing the differences. So we created a bigger array to better check the differences. We can have 10 different dogs here. Okay, so at this point, this page has become server side rendered because this function will run every time the page is requested and this data is gonna be passed to the component. We just are not doing anything with that data at the moment. Now, keep in mind that in an actual real world scenario, this would be an external API call instead of just getting an array from within the, the project itself. And we'll probably have a bit more logic to handle how to generate or what data to generate on each request. But just for the purpose of the video, we're going to simplify this to make the page server-side rendered. Okay, so the next step is that now that we have the component receiving the data, we can take it and do whatever we want with it. So what we'll be doing here is creating a two-column grid. So we have a div with a display grid with two columns of general width. And inside it, we're going to map every dog that we are receiving on the data. And for each of them, we're going to create a link so that we can go to the page of that dog directly and displaying it inside a div with a border for visibility. And then we render the dog's name and the description. So now we are taking the data that we were receiving at a component. We are looping through it and creating items on the screen for each of those elements on that data. So we're going to save it. And by the end, if we go back to our application, we can see that our dog application has grown larger because since we 
increase the number of dogs in the array insists on the last video we did something to always use that array to generate this page this is also a statically generated page it's also automatically updated but now if we go to dog slash carousel it should look something like this this is a grid that we created two columns with two random dogs of that randomly sorted list from our in-memory database so then the magic happens when we refresh the page because the dogs are going to change then if we refresh again and again and again every time we refresh this page we're going to be running this function right here on xjs the get server side props it's going to always fetch dogs sort them randomly and get two of them out of that array and then the react component is going to receive that data that updated data and it's going to render accordingly pretty cool huh so now as a final step, we're gonna be clearing this up, running npm run build, which is the build command for Next.js for the production build. And we're gonna see a difference. Cause don't forget that on the development mode, this is always gonna be fetched. That's, that's the normal behavior of server side props, but also on development mode, this static functions for Next.js are also gonna be called on each request. But on the production mode, these will only run at build time and never going to run again. And contrary to this server side props function that will be run on every request on production or development. Now that we ran the run build command, we can check the difference, which is these pages are still the same. This icon right here represents down here that it is statically site generated using get static props. But now we have a new symbol right here which is on our docs carousel page. And this symbol indicates that it is a server side rendered at runtime. So at this point, we have three different types of pages on our application. We have static pages, we have statically site generated pages using external data, and then we have our server side generated pages. And this was it for this video. We just created a server side rendered page within Next.js and we now have basically a complete application using the three methods that we can use within Next.js. If you run into any trouble with either this or any of the previous videos, you can feel free to reach me out on Twitter. My DMs are always open there. You can also join the Discord channel. The link is in the description down below where we can chat and troubleshoot any problems I might have. Smash the like button if you enjoyed this video. Share with your friends that also want to become Next.js heroes. And stay tuned that you don't miss out on the next video of this series where we are helping you become a Next.js pro. Until the next time, happy coding.